yourself? Uh, yeah, so my name is Aishwarya Jada. So currently I'm working in an organization and I have uh, five plus years of experience in the areas of manual testing. So currently I'm looking for a job switch, but 80% uh, of the openings uh, demand automation testing as a skill. And that is why I, I have enrolled myself in this course so that I will be able to clear the upcoming interviews and get a new job. Okay. So explain what is a public static void man? Uh, so public static void man is the main method. The execution always starts from the main method. Uh, public is the access specifier, static is the modifier, void is the return type, and main is the method name. Okay. Explain how Java internally works. Okay. So uh, the dot Java file, uh, it is present in a human uh, understandable language. It is not understood by the operating system. So that is why... We have compiler and interpreter. So what happens in compiler is it will check for the syntax rules and it will check for the compile time error. If there are no errors, it will process the dot Java file into the dot plus file. Dot plus file is neither understandable by the human and nor by the operating system. So the dot class file is passed as an input to the interpreter. What interpreter will do is it will check for the runtime error. If there is no runtime error, it will convert the dot class file into the binary file. Now, in interpreter, we have four uh, main things. One is the Java virtual machine. It is responsible for the execution of the code, starting from the main method. Then there is JDK, that is Java development kit. It consists of the library files, which are required to run the program. We have uh, GIT, just in time, which converts the dot class file into the binary. And then we have Java runtime environments, which are responsible for running the Java program, without which we, have, uh, we cannot run the Java program. Okay, what is method overloading? So, uh, developing multiple methods with the same name but different in the argument list is called as method overload. Can we overload main method? No, we cannot overload main method. No, sorry. Uh, yes, we can overload the main method. Hmm. How? By creating a different, by passing different arguments. Okay. What is constructor? A uh, constructor is a special uh, method which has the same name as that of the class. Uh, it does not have any return type. Uh, constructor is used to initialize the element and uh, constructor uh, always has to be non-static. You can also overload the constructor. Okay. What are the conditional statements? Uh, conditional statements we have in Java are if if else, if else, uh, and mustard if. So, uh, depending on the condition, uh, the we get the output. So, in if uh, condition, conditional statement, uh, uh, we can get more than one outputs. So, whereas in if else, we will get only one possible output. So, whichever condition comes from will be the output. Whereas in if else, uh, we can uh, only the first uh, statement or or the first condition, whichever will come through, will get executed. Okay, what are the comparison operators? Comparison operators. Uh, the logical operators, you mean like and or not. I was asking what are the comparison operators? Comparison operators. Like greater than equal to or less than equal to. You do you know the answer? Mm, no, I'm not sure on this part. Sorry. Okay. So what is inheritance? Uh, inheriting the property from one class to another is called as inheritance. Inheritance can be achieved with the keyword called as extent. Then we have uh, five types of inheritance in Java. First one is a single level inheritance wherein uh, only a one, there will be only one parent and child, wherein the child will inherit the properties of the parent. Then second one is a multi-level inheritance. In uh, multi-level, there will be a maximum of three generations. Uh, that is child, parent, and grandparent. So third one is the multiple level inheritance. So in Java, it is not possible uh, to solve this problem using uh, uh, class. And so that is why we 
do uh, the multiple level inheritance can be achieved using interface. Then we have the hierarchical level inheritance. In hierarchical level inheritance, a single a multiple child will, uh, child will inherit the property from a single parent. And then last one is the uh, hybrid. It is a combination of the single, uh, multi, multi level and uh, hierarchical level inheritance. Okay. What happens when multiple level inheritance problem is solved using class? It will create a diamond problem. It creates an ambiguity because uh, when uh, what happens in multi uh, in multiple inheritance is a single child try, tries to inherit the property from multiple parents. So uh, if a single child, suppose there is a super common statement which is present in the child, it will create an ambiguity or it will create a confusion uh, of which parent properties uh, to call which parent constructor because of the object class. Okay. So what is interface? Interface with the help of interface, we can achieve 100% of the abstraction. Uh, interface, uh, so whenever we create an interface, we need to use the keyword called as interface. Interface will only consist of the abstract methods. So whichever methods are present in the interface needs to be overridden in the main method or in the childish method. And whatever the methods are present in uh, interface, there is no need to write the abstract keyword in front of it. Okay. So what is method overriding? Okay. So uh, method overriding is creating the same method in that of the parent, creating the method in the parent uh, with the same signature and uh, same signature and return type but uh, different in implementation as that of the child class is called as method overriding. Mm -hmm. Method over, uh, only the non-starting methods can be overridden. Okay. And uh, there should be a relation present between the uh, child and the parent and then only we will be able to override it. And method overriding can be achieved using the uh, keyword called as super. Okay. Explain super keyword. So, uh, when we want to uh, bring the child class, uh, parent class implementation together with the child class implementation, that is when we use a super keyword. So, super keyword can be written uh, inside a non static method. It is not necessary that it has to be present as a first name. It can be present at any line. And uh, it uh, the method has to be non static to so use a super keyword. Okay, what is super calling statement? Per calling statement a new calling from one class constructor, child class constructor to the parent class constructor is called a super calling statement. We have two types of super calling uh, statements. One is the implicit and second one is the explicit. So what happens in implicit super calling statement? It will call the child class constructor. It will call the child class constructor to the parent class constructor besides the parameters. Implicit, uh, it is not mandatory to write the implicit super calling statement. It is present but we cannot see it. But even though we can write it implicitly, like there is no rule as such. Whereas uh, explicit super calling statement means calling the child class constructor to the parent class constructor, which has the parameters. It's called as uh, explicit and it has to be written explicitly. Okay. What is this keyword and this calling statement? Steward and this calling statement. Uh, so I will first tell about the this calling statement. So this calling statement. This statement is used to call from uh, one constructor to another other another constructor within the same class. Then uh, this uh, there are two types of this keyword. That is one is uh, this without parameters and the second is this with parameters and uh, parameter range and uh, this calling statement both needs to be written explicitly. Also, uh, yeah, so that is about this uh, calling statement. And for this keyword, uh, it is used uh, when, when we want uh, the value of the global uh, local variable same as that of the global variable, then we use the, this keyword. So uh, whenever the uh, method parameters are same as that of the global variable, that is when we use the this keyword. 
So this keyword needs to be only used in case of non-static uh, methods. What is difference between global variable and local variable? Uh, so local variable uh, is always written inside the method. The scope of the local variable is from the starting of the method uh, till the end of it. Local variables cannot be distinguished between static and non-static. The local variables do not have any default value. Local values cannot be utilized until and only for initialized with a value. Whereas uh, global variables are declared outside the methods. The scope of the global variable is from the starting of the class till the end of it. Global variables do have a default value. Uh, global variables can be distinguished between static and non-static. And uh, we can uh, directly uh, use a global variable once they are declared. There is no need of initializing it. Okay. So mention some string functions. Okay. So uh, two uppercase, it converts the string to uppercase, then we have lower case. Then there is is empty, which checks whether the string is empty or not. We have trim, it removes the empty space, uh, spaces. Uh, then we have concat. So it is used to concat uh, two strings uh, uh, together. Uh, then we have the substring function. Uh, length function, string length function. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, write a program in string to display your name where each of your name's letter will be in one line, in different, different lines, separate lines. Like A will be in one line, I will be yeah, in the yeah. next line. Can you write that program? Yeah, right. Yeah. Share sure. your screen. Oh, is my screen visible? Yeah, it's uh, showing yes, Jadav has started screen sharing. Okay. I've opened my Eclipse, is it? It is slow. It, yes, now it's open. Um, no, I'm not sure how to write this program. We need to practice. Okay. Or, or okay, write another program to of a, where there will be one constructor, one static mm -hmm. method, one non-static method, one SIB, mm -hmm. one IAB, and so share its a method of order execution. One constructor. One SIB. One SIB. Mm -hmm. One IIB. Mm -hmm. One main method. Okay. One static method, one non static method. Okay.
Okay, so uh, the order will be uh, first and uh, always the static uh, initialization block and the rest of it will get executed. Mm -hmm. Then uh, the main method will get executed. Then the always uh, the IAB will get executed and then the constructor will get executed. Okay. Mm. And this uh, I am non static method, it is executed after constructor. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Can you explain how it is executed after constructor? Because uh, after calling the object of the constructor, uh, so uh, the execution happens line by line. So that is why after creating the object of uh, constructor, we have called the static method, non -stat a non static method, and that is why we are going to take after the constructor. Okay, can you say what is scanner? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, shall I stop sharing or is it okay? Yeah, now stop sharing. Okay. Uh, so, scanner is a predefined class in Java. Uh, it is used to accept the human input at the runtime. Uh, scanner is also one of the final class in Java. Uh, it, uh, we always need to pass one parameter to the scanner mm -hmm. object that is pushed in the thing. So with the help of the reference variable, we can access all the scanner methods. Yeah. Okay, again, share your screen and write a program in scanner and uh, show the exception.
ओके फाइन सो व्हाट इज एक्सेप्शनल हैंडलिंग एक्सेप्शन एक्सेप्शन सो व्हेनेवर द एनी एक्सेप्शन अकर्स इन द प्रोग्राम वी नीड टू हैंडल इट विद एक्सेप्शन एक्सेप्शन हैंडल सो वी हैव द ट्राई एंड कैच ब्लॉक टू हैंडल द एक्सेप्शन सो व्हाट एवर द एक्सेप्शन अकर्स इन द जावा प्रोग्राम व्हिच विल बी रिटर्न इन द ट्राई ब्लॉक and uh, what were the code uh, that is used to handle the exception which will be written in the catch uh, block okay. and uh, if there is uh, any exception occurring then only the catch block will execute and never the try try block and mm -hmm. if there is no exception uh, occurring then only the try block will execute and uh, the catch block will never be executed any try block can have any infinite number of catch blocks okay so handle this uh, scanner exception in try and catch block Okay, fine. Shall I stop the sharing? Yeah, sure. Explain what is abstract. Explain what is interface. Uh, interface we have already discussed. Shall I explain once again? Is yes, interface explain means how to? What is the keyword we use to do? Ah, interface? yeah. Okay, so. Uh, for interface, we use a keyword called as implement. Okay. So, uh, from interface, we can only inherit any other interface. From interface, we cannot inherit any other class. Okay. What is difference between abstract method and concrete method? So, abstract methods con uh, can consist of both abstract methods as well as uh, concrete methods. Abstract class always needs to be written like. uh whenever we uh, declare any class as abstract we need to use the abstract keyword in front of it and uh, the methods uh, which are present in abstract class abstract methods we need to use the abstract keyword in front of it whereas concrete methods uh, and the abstract methods that those methods will do not have any implementation abstract methods need to be overridden in the childish class or in the main method whereas concrete methods are those methods which consist of the uh, implementation and concrete class uh, consists of only the concrete methods it will never consist of the abstract methods and what is abstraction abstraction it is uh, uh showcasing only uh, uh, the properties or uh, that is required to the uh, Showcasing only what is required as far as abstraction. So with abstract class, we can achieve uh, zero to hundred percent of abstraction. But with the interface, we can achieve hundred percent of the abstraction. Okay. What is encapsulation? Encapsulation. Uh, hiding the. 
protecting the data members or uh, protecting the members of the class that is variables and uh, methods uh, using the access specifier called as private uh, by not providing the direct access uh, to those members is called as encapsulation whereas providing the indirect access uh, to those members by using the getter and setter is called as encapsulation okay. what is polymorphism Polymorphism means uh, an object showing uh, different behavior during the different uh, stages of its life cycle is called as polymorphism. We have two types of polymorphism, runtime and compile time. So an object showing different behavior during different stages of its life cycle at the runtime is called as runtime polymorphism. Whereas an object showing different behavior during the different stages of its life cycle at the compile time is called as compile time polymorphism. Runtime polymorphism and compile time polymorphism can be achieved using the concepts of method overloading and method overriding. Okay. What is uh, array? Array. Array is a class. Uh, Uh, array always uh, stores the homogeneous values. It never st stores the heterogeneous values. Then array uh, follows the indexing. Array does uh, array allows the duplicate values. Okay. What is a collection? Collection is a framework in Java which is uh, which is used to read, update, create, and delete the uh, data. Then uh, collection uh, is by default interface in nature. Collections uh, have different classes and interfaces interfaces present in it. Uh, it allows uh, because of the different methods and because of the different classes and interfaces uh, interfaces present in the collection, it uh, allows it speeds the uh, programming speed. It increases the programming speed and. Uh, Okay. It also allows heterogeneous values collection. Okay. How many, what kind, what all methods we can as access when the access specifier for is within the class? Uh, this is for class or this is for methods? Access specifier for methods. Okay. So within the class, uh, we can access all the access specifiers except the private one. Okay. And uh, what happens when we outside the package by becoming the subclass? Outside the package by becoming the subclass, uh, we can access uh, public and protected. And when when we when it doesn't become the subclass? Then you can only access public. Okay. So Aishwarya, thank you. We have answered most questions brilliantly. Just to have to go through the programs which error you did. Have to yes. do it once again. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you.